Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys an updated how I take notes video. I think the last time I made a video like this was more than a year ago, and back then I was still mostly into aesthetic notes, but a lot has changed for me since starting university, so I thought I'd give you guys an update on that. Also, if you want a more in-depth look at the differences between pretty and functional notes, then feel free to check out the video I linked in the description description box. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I take notes for more content-based classes like biology as well as more calculation-based classes like chemistry. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get started. So since I take all of my notes digitally now, the only apps I use are Google Docs on my laptop, which is completely free, and GoodNotes 5 on my iPad, which costs around $8 from the App Store. Starting off with the more concept-based classes, where it requires a good amount of memorization. So some classes that fall under this category include Geography, Biology, and Psychology. I'll take my psychology notes as an example and show you guys how I have that set up. So as you can see, I have all of my notes for this one course in this single document and just some formatting things. The margins of the page are set to 0.5 as opposed to the default 1.0. The font that I often use is E.B. Garamond and I write most of my notes in size 11 font. Now at the top of the page, I indicated the course code as well as the semester I took the course in. Right below that, I set up a multi-column table which outlines the major units that are covered in the course. There's not much practical use to this other than it just offers a nice overview. On to the main portion of my notes, I don't use a particular method like Cornell, mapping, or charting, which I think are the more well-known ones. I simply have a two-column table set up. So I merged the first row and wrote the lecture number and topic of the unit, and then started taking notes by writing the main title in the first column and the corresponding notes in the second. So when I take notes, the goal is to understand the concept that is being presented. For example, example, I would be watching a pre-recorded module or reading the textbook and be taking notes on that. I try to process and reword information in a way that's clear to me, which realistically, it's not always the most concise, and I think that's not really the biggest problem here for me, because at most it's probably just an extra sentence, but at least I understand the concepts. So now I'm going to walk you guys through as to how I set up and take these notes. So first, I have a title written in font 13, which includes the class code as well as the semester in which these notes were taken in. Then I inserted a table which had two columns and however many rows. So the first thing I did was just make the outline of the table gray. This is just a personal preference, but I feel like black is just a little too much. And then I merged my first row and I would write the lecture number followed by the topic of the lecture. And then below that, I essentially labeled what each of the columns are for. So the first one is the general topic and the second column is for a summary. So then I went back in and filled these two rows with black and purple, and I did this because it helps distinguish between different lecture numbers or different units. And then onto the actual notes, after writing the title in the first column, I then write any subtitles in the second column and make sure to underline it. Then I start the main portion of my notes. So I use a dash to start off my notes and an indented dash for any additional information. I also like to use an indented list to indicate processes or components of a bigger group. And in my notes, I also use the right arrow a lot to indicate a change in a process, as well as the up and down arrow to indicate increase or decrease in something. In particular for psychology, sometimes I would write down specific examples that would help me better understand a certain concept, and I often like to italicize those just to differentiate it from the rest of my notes. Just because some doesn't come from textbooks or modules, so it's just some external examples that helped me understand. 
As you can tell, I don't use any fancy colors in my notes because I find it to be more distracting than helpful. So I simply write everything in black and then bold the important terms and concepts. I also often add tables and pictures to my notes taken directly from a textbook or module. And I think that's the really convenient thing about digital notes. You can get away with putting more graphs and tables, which help explain the concepts better and usually in less words. Sometimes I also end up making my own tables when the ones provided don't seem to summarize the concept well enough. Something else I noticed in terms of the note-taking process that's very different between high school and university is that it's just so much more content from a number of different sources in university. For example, my notes are usually a compilation of information from pre-recorded modules, live lectures, and textbook readings. And of course, there are usually big overlaps between all of these sources, which makes note-taking, I think, a little bit harder. So here's my not very efficient approach. I essentially took notes from each of these sources separately, and then I combined and organized it at the end. And although it was time consuming, I think it worked out fine because when I came to the process of organizing, I think it acted as a good review of the material for me. And that's pretty much on how I take notes for more content-based classes. Moving on to calculation-based classes, which often include things like chemistry, maths, physics, which require a deeper understanding of the concepts so you can apply them in given problems. And since the only calculation-based class I'm taking in university is actually chemistry, I'll base most of what I've learned from that. Now, I use a combination of GoodNotes and Google Docs for this, so I take quote-unquote notes in chemistry by simply annotating the slides. And this is pretty much when I learn most of the material, so I would just write down things that were said in the module but not included in the slides already. Then I translated part of the content that's more theory-based to my Google Doc for chemistry and followed the same steps as I had mentioned previously. In addition to that, I also added relevant formulas to my notes and italicized and highlighted that. However, I didn't bother translating any examples and applications of the course to my actual notes, just because I didn't think it would help to rewrite examples. So instead, I would just do a bunch of different practice problems to help me understand how each of these concepts apply under different conditions. And unlike psychology or biology, where closer to the exams, I would reread my notes and maybe make flashcards out of some concepts, I never really went back to my chemistry notes before the exam. So note taking for this was more so just for me to organize and further process the course content in the moment. And that's pretty much how I take notes now. A bit different than before in that it's less pretty and aesthetic, but I'm happy that I found a decent note-taking system for myself that's efficient and effective. So hopefully you found some part of this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and check out more of my content, and I will see you guys in 2021. Happy New Year!